Hey guys, you're watching Danski, the place to be to develop your creative skills and in this tutorial we're going to learn how to draw a sad crying emoji all in Adobe Illustrator. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial, let's jump into it. Rightio, so we're now in Illustrator and I've created a new artboard that is a thousand pixels wide and a thousand pixels high. And you can see I've got a very pixelated version of the crying emoji over here that we're going to be recreating as a beautiful crisp clean vector. So first of all I'm going to grab the ellipse tool, left click and hold shift to draw a circle and we could go to the swatches panel and pick a color or we could just use the eyedropper tool to sample a color straight from this image. So it depends entirely what you're creating and I think I'll just scale this up a little bit more and position that in the center. Something else I'm going to do is go to view and down to snap to pixel and switch this off. Snap to pixel and snap to point are both very helpful but when they're both selected Illustrator sometimes has difficulty determining which to snap to, the pixel or the point. So I'm just going to set this to point so all my anchor points snap together if I need them to. Okay so we have a circle. Next let's go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And again we can pick a color or just sample a color. I'm going to pick a color this time so we'll go for a lighter version of the yellow we had before and if we scale down holding shift you can see it scales to one side if we hold down alt and shift it'll scale towards the center so we'll scale this down a bit and then move it up so something like this and I can now go and select the color behind and just maybe fine-tune that a little bit as well Okay, next what I'm going to do is create the eyes. So you can see we have these curved eyes over here, a bit thicker in the middle and thinner at either end. So let's grab the pen tool, click and click and drag to create that curve. And then it wants to continue that curve here so we can just press escape to cancel that. And with the main selection tool, just swap that fill and stroke and then just double click on the stroke and we can pick a color. I'm going to go for something like this. So the six digit reference for this is 1B2226. Click OK. And from the stroke panel, we can just increase the weight as well. Make that a bit thicker and change the cap type to round cap. And it just rounds off those edges. Next, what we're going to do is grab the width tool from the toolbar on the left and just hover around the center. Click and drag and we can make this a bit thicker. We can also hover over the ends and just make these a little bit thinner and adjust this so we get that thicker area in the middle and the thinner areas at the left and the right side. I might just make that a touch thicker so you can see I just need to select the width tool, hover over those points and then I can go and edit them like so. Fantastic. Let's just position this roughly where it is and go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, object, transform, reflect, reflect it along the vertical axes, click OK and we can just drag this one out as well. Boom, there we go, we've got two eyes. Next we're going to create the puddle of tears, it sounds very sad saying that. So again with the ellipse tool, we're just going to click and drag to create our puddle. And you can see those smart guides nicely line everything up. And I can swap the fill and the stroke, double click on the fill and just pick a color. And now I need to go to object, arrange and center back so it's behind and I'm just going to drag that to the bottom and again it just snaps in place beautifully. So next I need the rectangle tool and we're going to create the stream of tears. This sounds incredibly depressing. And just make sure that that does extend fully into the puddle of tears and into the eyebrow or the eye and then go to object arrange and not center back because that will send it behind everything so just look at this shortcut here send backwards and you can do that as many times as you need to until it sends it behind and we can now select this and we could go edit copy edit paste in place again another way you can quickly copy shapes is by holding alt and shift and just clicking and dragging. 
So there we go, you can see our emoji coming together. Now this at the moment is meant to be symmetrical. You can see we've got lots of elements. The spacing is a little bit off on the left and the right. So the way to make this symmetrical is select all of the elements that are on the left and the right side. So holding shift, I can select both of the streams of tears, go to object, group, and select both eyes, holding shift, and object and group. Once any pairs are grouped together, you can drag over everything and from the top or by going to window and down to align. We can now align everything horizontally, centrally by clicking this and you can just see it nudges everything into place. And now we just need to go to object and ungroup to ungroup all of it. And we know that this is now symmetrical. Okay, so the last thing to do is just to add the mouth. So we've got the mouth here, we've got this strange shape. I'm actually going to use the pen tool for this and I'm going to click, hold shift to make sure that line is straight. I'm going to go into the tiers at the moment and I can always shrink it down afterwards. And I'm still holding shift. I'm going to let go of shift now. So this bit here is a little bit shallower. You can see it marks that center point. In fact, it's incredibly helpful. I'm not even holding anything now and it marks that point. So it identifies that I'm trying to make a symmetrical shape. Swap the fill and the stroke, and we can now position this. So I think what I'm going to do is probably just select this left blue rectangle here and the eye by holding shift, and I'm going to nudge them using the arrow keys on the keyboard. Go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now the reason I'm using the arrow keys and counting is because I can now do the same on the right side. I'm just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I don't need to go and reposition everything because I know that it's still symmetrical. Now you can hold shift on the keyboard and use the right arrow key as well to jump 10 immediately. And we can do the same on the left. So hold shift and use the left arrow key. That's probably a little bit too far. So I'll just bring that back in. And I might even just go and move these up slightly and just make sure that I extend these blue rectangles as well. So to keep that symmetry, whatever you do to the left, make sure you do it to the right as well. So we'll scale this down again towards the center. And you can see we have these rounded corners here. So what I'm going to do with this selected is select the direct selection tool. And you can see I get these circles appear inside the edges. So what I can do is click on one here and you can see it's selected. I can hold shift click one. So these top two are now selected and I can click on them and drag to curve those individually. So I can also do this for the bottom two. These have a slightly larger radius so I'm going to curve those up. And then if I click on the one in the middle on its own, that's got a slight bend in it as well. Something like this. But I could also use the direct selection tool to make this middle point a bit higher. But you can see I've already curved it. So if I go to edit and undo corners, I can now just bring this one up. So it's always worth making those adjustments to the position before you start curving it. And then I can click and curve it that way. And I think it's probably a bit taller. So again, I can use the direct selection tool and just select all of these top anchor points. Now the reason I'm selecting the top anchor points is because if I don't and I just use the main selection tool, it will skew the shape like this. And of course we don't want that. So if you want to extend a shape that you've already kind of messed around with corners and radiuses and everything, use the direct selection tool and just select the half that you want to extend and extend only that half. Okay. So now we've just got to finish with this little white bit here the teeth and I'm going to do this manually with the pen tool and we'll see how this looks. So I'm zooming in nice and close and I'm just going to grab white from the color picker and you can see it's applied that to the, chain, the shape I had selected. So we'll undo that and go to select, deselect and then with the pen tool I can select the color that I want without affecting anything on the artboard. 
And I might need to jump out to reference the teeth just to remember what they look like. Or we could just draw our own, to be honest. So again, it marks that center point. In fact, I'm just going to draw half and then flip it and then merge those two shapes together just so I'm sure that I get that symmetry. So it wants to continue that curve. We can actually hold down Alt on the keyboard and click and it will cut that short. And then just bring this round, swap the fill and the stroke. And then again, we can use the direct selection tool to click on this corner in the top left and I could just round that off if I wanted to, if I wanted to match the, the radius of the mouth. And now I can select this, hold Alt, Shift and drag, go to Object, Transform, Reflect and reflect it along the vertical axes. Snap these together. Now they are still two shapes. If I go into Outline Mode, which is Command or Control Y, you can see they are still two separate halves. However, if we select them holding shift and just go to window, down to Pathfinder, we can select the top left option, which is Unite, and it will merge these into a single shape. So it's just a bit cleaner. Cleaner? That's not even a word. It's a bit cleaner and a bit tidier. And it's just a really good habit to get into with a lot of things created in Illustrator. And there we go, we've pretty much created our emoji. You can, of course, go and fine tune this. So I'm actually going to bring the eyes back down and just try and match the original a little more closely. In fact, I could spend the entire day messing around with this, but I'm simply going to finish by just deleting this one, dragging over everything I've created and going to Object, Group. So this is now grouped together and I can move this around as I like. And there we go, we've created our sad, tear streaming, crying emoji face and we are done. And there we go, that was how to draw a sad, crying emoji, all in Illustrator, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please do drop those down below. But as always, like this video if you enjoyed it, take care and I'll see you next time.